Okay. Well, welcome everyone. So I'm going to talk to you uh, about uh, WNMR and in particular one portal of WNMR. We have several portals that are serving the, our users, but one of them now is making use in the production manner of the desktop grid infrastructure offered by IDGF. So first a few words about the virtual research community that WNMR is representing. So WNMR stands for a worldwide e-infrastructure for NMR and structural biology. Uh, NMR is a technique which uh, resembles uh, MRI scanners that you have in hospital where you put full bodies and you make pictures of people. In NMR we use strong magnetic field, we put molecules in there and we can measure among other distances between atoms. And then this information needs to be translated into three-dimensional models of, of molecules of proteins to understand how they work and to understand where things go wrong when it comes to disease. Uh, we are not limited to NMR, we are also using other methods like uh, small angle X-ray scattering where you can also study molecules in solution and get information about their shapes. So in WNMR we set up to basically have protocols and, and well-defined pathways for users to take their data and to run all the way to the final product which will be 3D structures of proteins and interactions. So in three years time, so the WNMR project was an EU funded project. Uh, we have grown as the largest virtual organization in life sciences in terms of number of users. In terms of CPU, the biomed is still the largest. Uh, we have over 600 registered users who got certificates to register with the VO. In terms of the virtual research community members, so these are the members that registered at our VRC site. So we have their registration, but they don't need to have certificates to make use of the infrastructure. We have over 1,200, and you see the distribution. They are coming from all over the place. Uh, we have access uh, to about 100,000 CPU cores through EGI, and the uh, EDGF resources are part of that. And typically, we are computing in the order of 5 million jobs per year and in the order of uh, 2,000 CPU years. So we are offering access to predefined applications and, and workflows to our users through web portals. That's a, a key aspect. And this is just a, a look of some of the portals. I'm not going to go into what they are doing, but they all have the, look, the same look and feel. Uh, users can access them directly from, from a web portal. There is no, uh, these are not science gateways, if you think of uh, Cybers, for example, project. These are simple web portals. Um, so, Distribution of resources, where are we sending the jobs? Uh, you see that we are mainly supported in Europe, but we also have uh, support in South Africa, uh, Latin America, in the US. We are sending jobs across the Atlantic to the open science grid resources in a transparent manner. Uh, we are sending jobs to, uh, to Asia as well. And we are sending jobs also in a transparent manner, as I was going to show you, to uh, desktop grid resources. So this is a distribution of the of our user community, the virtual research community members, and you see that they are well represented. So the top country in number of, of members is India. There's a lot of bioinformatics research apparently going on there. And then you find the US and then comes Europe. So two thirds of the users that are using our resources are coming from outside Europe. So, so we are really a worldwide community in that respect. And you see that the growth is, uh, is still ongoing, the project officially ended in terms of financial support from the EU at this date, and we are still growing. It looks like you have a dip here, but this is because I measured that last week. So in May, we only have less than two weeks. So I expect in May that this is, uh, the trend is ongoing. So this is even increasing if you compare uh, the, the start from the end. So now more specific about the Haddock portal. So Haddock is an application uh, which is being developed in my own research group in Utrecht. So that's really my, uh, uh, my research work going there, where we try to understand how molecules interact with each other. This kind of interaction in life is, is key because all processes, we are all alive today because molecules are talking to each other, passing information, making molecules, breaking molecules. So this is the chemistry of life. And we want to predict this, and for this uh, we need uh, computers, because there is a lot of computation involved in what's the happening behind the server. And the portal itself has actually several entry levels for 
very simple entry levels for users who have very little experience, but also very advanced entry level for the more experienced user. So we're trying to, to make things as user-friendly as possible and shield the complexity of the computation from the end user. So what are we speaking about? Uh, we heard about free body uh, Newtonian problem in one of lighting talk today. So here we are dealing with end bodies where we are looking at uh, say thousands of tens of thousands of atoms that are interacting together and uh, the simple rules of interactions between two molecules that we are looking at is interactions between charges, electrostatic de descriptions and then there is a attractive repulsive term for the more physical people among you and chemistry, this is the Van der Waals potential. So these are energy functions and we are sampling the energy space trying to find a low energy solution to the problem. And this is what the docking process is about. Now I show you a map of the VRC users of we NMR. This was 1,200 people registered. This is a map of the Haddock users, the users of the web portal of Haddock. This is over 4,000 users. And again, the distribution you see again, India popping up here and, and the US, but all over the place. And actually, we cover a bit more countries than the, the, the VRC. Uh, since recently, all users of the portal can also access grid resources. What we are using to send jobs to the grid are robot certificates. People have to register with the VRC to get access to the grid certificate, to the grid resources, or the users that are registered with the portal, the Haddock portal itself, since we know all their, uh, who they are, we know their identity, and we are now giving them access as well to grid resources. So in principle, there's over 4,000 people making use of uh, the infrastructure. So what's happening behind the scene? Uh, we are running a complex workflow, so it's not one type of data, one application, one output. No, there's a lot of validation that goes in, there's a lot of pre-processing, then there's the computing part which is sent to the grid, and there's a lot of post-processing. So this is not a workflow that will be very simple to build in some workflow management system like Taverna or, or over scientific gateways. So we need local resources, we need grid resources, we need post and pre-processing of the data. And to my experience, this is not something which can be easily done in, in a classical scientific gateway. So we are doing things maybe differently. We are not following the rules that some people would like to promote, but this is working, this is very well used and this is generating results. And this is generating also scientific publications. The application itself has been cited more than 1,000 times, the, the paper, the original paper. So how do we deal with the grid submission? So the user interacts at this level with, with web portals, and then the, the different applications that we have in WeNMR are going to send, to, to generate a job that are put into a job pool. At this level, at the user interface, there are demons running that check, is their job to be done? Yes, then I send them out. And then they are monitoring what's happening with the jobs. And here we have, some, we have built some mechanism for failure to submit automatically jobs. And if the jobs come back successfully, it's processed and it's put back in a pool of results. And then the workflow on top of that takes over and keeps the, the calculation running. And when we'll go to the post-processing when everything is finished. So typically, uh, we are in terms of uh, data, the input is rather limited. Uh, the output is, is reasonable, few gigabytes, but the gigabytes are not going over the grid. The gigabytes are generated on our local resources. So we are mainly CPU limited and not data limited in what we are doing. And each job submitted by the user to the portal, we translate into hundreds of thousands of jobs that are sent to the grid. So there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence between what the user gives and what goes on the grid, but it's increased. So how do we do the grid submission? So basically what, what our grid pool contains is a shell script to be executed on the working node, an archive that contains all the data that are required to run the job, a file that contains the location where the results should be sent back. So in principle, our job pool could contain data that are coming from different portals. It does not know what is the application running. It does not know where the data are coming from. It only knows where the results should be sent back. So we have decoupled the portal from the grid submission. And then we use the standard script, the job description language, to select the job out to the grid. And we don't want to pre-select where the jobs are running. 
we just want uh, the site to have a given software environment installed. We remotely deploy the software. In this case, we need CNS version 1.2 to run, or we run on OSG resource in the US, and there are some CPU time requirements here. And then we have a ranking of sites. So basically, we don't predefine sites. We send the jobs out with requirements, and a job will end up running somewhere where there is capacity at this time. And that's important. So we remotely deployed uh, the jobs. Now, currently, the IDGF resources are not appearing in the VMS brokering system of, of the AMI software. So if I just use these requirements, no jobs will land on EDGI resources yet. I think there are plans to make things discoverable in the future. So we had to modify simply our requirements to be able to send jobs to EDGF. And this was very simple. So basically, we replace those two lines by this one. So we do a direct submission to the compute element, the EDGI. It's a bit confusing. You have IDGF and EDGI. Uh, but this makes the job land on IDGI resources. Now, we don't want to send everything there because there is still plenty of sites out there. Uh, and since we cannot send things in a transparent manner, what we are currently done is that every tenth job sent by the Haddock portal is redirected to the desktop computing. And that's a, that's a parameter that we can adapt. And we also have built mechanisms that if things go wrong at this level, if something goes wrong at, at the desktop grid level, the, the grid manager will catch that and will send the job back to the regular uh, EMI services and, and job resources there. For us, it's important that the user does not have to wait for, to get back his results. The user doesn't care where things are running. Things should run smoothly. So some statistics. So this is statistics from this year, because we started basically uh, early this year, I think, to really implement uh, uh, things on the desktop grid resources. We first had to validate our software to make it run. Uh, the software is running in a Linux virtual machine, a mini system, uh, because we need the Linux environment to run our jobs. Uh, so this is, these are the months. This is now May 18th. This is the number of jobs that have been served by the Haddock server, and this is a log scale. So this is 1 million up there. So you see the number in blue, the number of jobs that are sent through uh, G-Lite. So we are a bit short of 100,000. The number of jobs that are being sent to uh, IDGF resources, and we started basically in January, and now we are also using DRAC as a mechanism to send up jobs, which is very efficient. And in the future, DRAC will also send jobs to desktop grid resources. So then it, it, it's all integrated. So now you can look at the success rate of the jobs. And you would like these things to, to look maybe a little bit better. You see, in the first months, we had to solve a number of issues and problems. So I'm showing you real case statistics. You see that some months, like March and April, were very good months. Everything was running smoothly. But when you, when you do grid business, there's always something at some point that goes wrong. It's not always inside our hands. You have to update the middleware, and then something breaks down. And if you don't realize directly that things are breaking down, your submission rate or your success rate goes down. And that's a problem. And we don't notice it directly because we have this failure mechanism so that if things go wrong in one direction, we resubmit in the other one. So at the end, the user doesn't notice that things go wrong. Only when you start doing statistics, you see that things go wrong. So now we had a little problem the last two weeks, and this makes that the success rate went down a bit. But this has been solved today, actually. So in conclusion, uh, it was very simple, I would say, to port things to desktop grid computers for the Haddock portal. We had to modify very little in the way that we are doing things, basically adding, replacing these two lines by the single line to submit to EDGI. Uh, we had to build some mechanism for, for safety to make sure that the workflow still keep going and that we are not waiting for a single job. So for example, uh, when sending to desktop grid, I, send, I, de I do two submissions for each job. So that when the first job comes back, you never know things might be running on the desktop of someone at home, and then it switch off his desktop, or you have to wait for a long time. So again, throughput is important. So by duplicating the submission, the first one that comes back uh, is taken, and the things co keep going. So currently, we uh, define uh, 
uh, we predefine a percentage of job which is targeted to the desktop grid resources. Uh, I think once those resources will be automatically discoverable in the EGI broking system, we don't have to do that. They will go there if there is space there. And, uh, and soon this will also be enabled in Dirac, then for us it will be even simpler. Uh, in terms of performance reliability, you know, in our experience, if you forget about May, which was a little dip there, uh, it has the similar reliability and performance as normal grid site. So I think it's an interesting resources. And I have personally also interest to, to convince my university that it might be also interesting things to do, to use all the computing powers which is out there on desktop PCs to, to support us. So I see that also as a sustainability uh, thing. This is a team of people working with me, or we, who have been working with me in the last years, who are responsible for all the development around the Haddock portal, which is at the, the key of, of this presentation. I want, to, I want to thank all the people from the desktop grid team with whom I've been working over the last five months to, to get these things running and to make it a success, and also support of SurfSara and some Dutch and European funding. Thank you very much for your attention.